Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, and today we're taking a look at Varuna Point. A couple things to talk about before we get started is some items to bring with you is a weapon of some sort, either a spear and a bow and some arrows, as well as plenty of food and water. The other items are more optional, but they can definitely help you out, and that's having a headlight for some sort of a light source, having oxygen bottle and flippers for the underwater exploration, as there is quite a bit of journeying underwater to do, and then making sure you have a backup spear or two, as there are quite a few enemies. The other things, again, are a lot more optional, but having the buff foods can really help you out. Making the spice, spicy pine berry can give you more swim speed, and the salmon salad to increase your oxygen capacity. The other buff foods can be useful as it gives you extra hearts to your life and a stew that lets you evade death, and this can be really useful for the boss fight later in the island. The good healing salve can also help with making sure you stay healthy enough to continue fighting the boss. The last required item is having a zipline tool as you will need this near the very end of the guide to make it to the other side of the island once we get there. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. So we want to start off by diving in between the two buildings here. And our goal is to look for the spotlight that will turn on and off intermittently. And when the spotlight is on, these jellyfish will move out of the way, allowing us to go inside. These tags here, it shows you a location that you can actually poke your head up above water and will allow you to refill your oxygen bar. But we're going to continue going on straight forward and take a left turn into this door. And there is an angler fish in here that we will need to take care of. Once the angler fish is dead, we're going to head into the next room here and we're looking for this spotlight part here. From here, we're going to turn around and go back the way we came and exit back into the hallway to go into the next room over. From here, we're going straight forward all the way to the next door and looking for another angler fish. And once your angler fish is dead, we're looking for the spotlight part on the bed here. We do need four of these spotlight parts, so we're going to continue moving on, heading back into the hallway and back the way we came. Our next stop is going to be refilling our oxygen and then heading into this elevator shaft to go up one more floor. From here, we want to continue on down the hallway to the very end, open the door here and grabbing the spotlight part on the table. Once we have that spotlight part, go ahead and turn around and head back out the way we came and we're looking to go up one more floor. So jump out of the water and we're looking to go up on top of these platforms over here. And the easiest way is actually just using this ramp right here to jump up top. Once you're up top, we're going to go straight to this door, take a left inside and continue going straight forward into another door. And your last spotlight part is right here on top of the desk. After this, we're going back the way we came. Back down the elevator shaft, and from here we're waiting for the jellyfish to get out of the way so we can exit. Once the jellyfish are out of the way, we're looking to go towards the next spotlight here where we can use our four spotlight parts. This will shine the light on the jellyfish down there and open the tunnel for us. So we're going to go inside the tunnel and follow the path to the left. There is a area to refill your oxygen if you need to here and then follow the pathway here. Our goal is to take a left here and another left until we get to the area with the tags here. From here, we need to go up and jump out of the water. Once we're up top, we need to head forward and our goal here is going to be avoiding all of the traps as we make our way through the path here. And there's traps such as these uh, spiky logs here, as well as spikes on the wall and on the floor. So you just need to be careful as you're moving around here. And some of these areas can get very tight. May have to crouch to go under certain obstacles. And then from here, we're taking a right to follow where these cords are going. After this, we're jumping up on top of this 
purple beam here to go up top. From here, we want to take a left and then we need to watch out for the tripwires on the ground here. And you simply need to jump over them. Otherwise you get hit by that thing up top. Be careful as there's two trip wires here. So continue up these ramps and jump up top. One more tripwire to be careful of and another one here um but from this jump we need to jump kind of all the way over everything here and then crouch down to go under the next section once you jump down you'll be able to go into the next area jump down again and in this area is our first destination where we can pick up the mother load key as well as the blueprint for the advanced headlight. Once you have the blueprint, we're looking to go up these crates next. So jump up top. All the way up. And from here, continue on forward. And our goal is looking for this painting on the wall here, as well as the door to the exit. So we can exit here, jump down and watch out for the spikes, and exit the building here. From here, we want to look down and follow this coral path that's on the wall, on the wall here down to our next area. Once we get to the bottom of the coral path, these oxygen bubbles, they are found pretty much throughout the buildings and outside if you need it, uh, but they do refill your oxygen bar if needed. From here, we need to go ahead and use our mother load key. Our goal here is basically to make it through the bottom and swimming through all of the obstacles in our way killing any of the angler fish that come at us. And once the angler fish is dead, go ahead and continue on your path. If you do need to stop at any of the bubbles to refill your oxygen, you can do that. And continue on down your path. Make sure you have plenty of oxygen at this point, as well as this is a good point to stop and heal yourself up if you need to. As when you get to the next area, we're going into the boss room pretty soon. So it's worth being topped off on any of your food and drinks and anything that may be helpful to fight the boss once we get there. All right, so let's continue on now. And when you get close to this door, it's going to bust open from the boss here and that's going to start the boss fight and we're going to go over that as best we can so here's the rhino shark and the goal with the rhino shark is to get him to ram into one of these four pillars here so the easiest way to do this is to taunt him get him to see you but stay near the pillar and then when he starts looking at you stay by the pillar and let him charge into it it may take you a few attempts but make sure you're watching the um, oxygen bar so you don't run out of oxygen and once he breaks open the pillar there he's going to run off and that gives you a chance to grab these explosive barrels here so pick up one and immediately start running back to the pillar to use an explosive barrel on it the next stage is to get him to charge into the pillar again and this will explode that barrel 
and lets you proceed to the next area. Once the barrel explodes, head up through the path, and this is going to continue the same fight that you've already been doing, except there are bigger pillars now. So go ahead and refill your oxygen if needed, and your goal is to stay near another pillar like this. It does need to be at the top of these pillars as he can't break the lower parts. These bigger pillars will require two to three attacks to be able to break them open. Keep an eye out for the Rhino Shark as if it does attack you, it will deal about one fifth of your HP every time he actually hits you. And it will also knock you back and that could get you in a perilous situation if you don't have enough health or oxygen. So go ahead and grab your explosive barrel and feed it into the pillar and then we're looking for the shark to charge into it one more time for us. Once the shark breaks open that pillar we're continuing up to fight him one last time on the same level. And it's the same thing except there's only one big pillar here. And he just hit me pretty good, takes a good portion of my health away. And then we need to wait for him to charge again. So just keep a good eye out for him. I know this area is kind of dark and a little hard to see, but he is pretty obvious once you see him moving around. Again, the pillars will take a couple hits to break open. So it may take you some time and this is where having your oxygen bottle and your food buffs can really help out. All right, we've got him to attack our last pillar, so we just need to feed an explosive barrel into it, and this boss will be taken care of. Once the boss hits this last pillar, it's gonna open up the top area for you, and you'll be able to loot this boss. When you loot the boss, it'll give you about 25 shark meat as well as the rhino shark trophy. Head up through the pillar here. There's basically only one path you can take to get out of here, but when you're at this level, we can pick up the blueprint for the wind turbine, as well as the crane key, which is necessary for the next story part. From here, we want to jump up this ladder and go up top. And then our goal is to go through these pipes to the next areas. Go ahead and refill up your oxygen bar here and use this to exit the door and this will bring you back to the same area where the jellyfish are at and from here we want to head back towards our raft. Once you get back up towards your raft our next goal is to head up to the top of this crane and this will be traveling mostly on foot but make sure you keep a spear handy as there are some lurkers in this area. So from here, we want to head towards these scaffoldings to be able to go up top. A few jumps to get up top here. And once we get up top, we're gonna head towards the right. And this is where your first lurker is at. Once the lurker's taken care of, our goal is to continue going up top. So jump on top of these bricks here. And on top of the building. And up the crates here. Once we get up top, the next part is jumping on this purple pillar to jump on top of the crane. And then on top of these pillars here. There is another lurker up top here. And once your lurker is taken care of, continue on to jump on top of these crates here. 
We're going to follow the pathway out here on top of the scaffolding and continue across to get to this wooden platform here. From here, we're going up more scaffolding. This is a little bit of a tricky jump, so be careful here. And then we're jumping up top. There is one more lurker up top and we can go ahead and take care of it. Once the lurker is taken care of, we're going to continue on to the ladder to climb to the top of the crane. Once you're at the top of the crane, we are looking to go inside this cabin here really quick. And this is where you can use your crane key. And once the crane key is turned on, use the lever and that will drop the bricks onto the other building, which will open up access to the next area. But before we head on down to that area, we are going to turn around and go up one more set of ladders. And this will allow us to continue on down the pathway to grab another blueprint. This blueprint is for the electric grill. Once you have your blueprint, head back towards where the crane controls are at. And this is where we need our zipline tool, so make sure you have it equipped and ride the zipline down. Once you get to this area, we're almost done here and we basically just need to jump through these areas. There's not really a specific way to do this. Our goal is just to make it to the area that has a light on with the lamp here and we can pick up another blueprint for the advanced battery as well as the coordinates for temperance. Once we have the coordinates, our next goal is simply to make it back to the raft so we can continue on with our story. And to do this, we need to go through another few sets of pipes. Jump into the water here. And use the door to exit. And that will allow you to be back outside. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.